the movie begins with Allison remembering her younger days when she said yes to everything without care. It was during this time that she met Carlos Torres, who later became her husband. Carol's, much like Allison, found it hard to say no to anything. The two of them were instantly attracted to each other and bonded over their inability to say no. Fast forward to several years later, Allison and Carlos become parents to three children and are forced to constantly say no to them unlike their younger selves. One morning, Allison is busy packing her children's lunch when her oldest daughter, Katie, asks her if she can attend a concert with her friend. Katie tells Allison that Carlos had told her she could go if her mother gave her the green light. This does not sit well with Allison since she does not want to be the bad guy, but with no other choice left, she tells Katie that she cannot go to the concert alone. Just then, Carlos joins them in the kitchen and tells Katie that he agrees with whatever her mother has told her. Since Allison had been the one to deny Katie's request, she had again become the bad guy. Allison often found herself in this situation because Carlos did not like saying no to their children. Once breakfast is over, Carlos leaves the house with their youngest daughter, Ellie. The two of them blast music in the car before Carlos drops Ellie off at her school. Meanwhile, Allison takes Katie and her brother Nando to school. In the car, Katie tries to convince Allison again to let her go to the concert, but she refuses. After dropping the kids off, Allison heads to a job interview, but gets rejected because the job is entry level. Later that night, Carlos and Allison meet at the school to attend the parent-teacher meeting. To their surprise, they see both Nando and Katie's teachers waiting for them together. Katie's teacher reveals that their daughter had written a poem in class that talks about her feelings trapped because of her mother's strictness. To make matters worse, Nando's teacher claims that Nando had conveyed the same sentiments and played a video for them that their son had filmed. In the video, Nando compares Allison to a dictator and claims that she rules over their lives. As the video ends, Allison begins to feel like the villain in her children's lives. After the meeting, she pushes Carlos into the cafeteria so that they can have a conversation alone. She tells him that he makes her seem like a bad person since he refuses to say no to the kids. Carlos apologizes for making things difficult for her and confesses that he has to say no to people at work on a daily basis, which is why he wants to always say yes to their children. Their conversation is interrupted by the school's guidance counselor, who suggests that they should give their children yes days. These are days when the parents get to say yes to everything that their children want. He suggests that they should lay down some ground rules and then give Yes Day a shot to see if things get better for them. At first, Allison refuses to entertain the idea, saying that their children are too out of control for them to give Yes Day a try. However, when they reach home, Allison is reminded of her younger days again, when she was carefree and never had to say no. She agrees to give her children a Yes Day and lays down several conditions for them. To earn a Yes Day, all three of the siblings have to complete their chores and make sure that they get their grades up. They are allowed to ask for anything, as long as it is not related to anything in the future or going outside of the 20-mile radius. Allison even makes a bet with Katie and agrees that if she says no even once during the day, she will let Katie attend the concert alone. Over the next couple of days, the three children manage to get their grades up and stay on top of their chores until they finally reach the much-awaited yes day. As soon as the alarm clock starts ringing at 6 a.m., all of the children head for their parents' room to wake them up. They are surprised to find that Allison is already awake and has been waiting for them. She jumps up on the bed and breaks the no jumping on the bed rule with them. As the children begin jumping, they wake Carlos up as well. As the first rule of yes day, they tell their parents that they are not allowed to use any screens throughout the day. To make matters worse, Ellie decides to dress both of her parents up for the day and gives Allison a makeover. Soon, Allison finds herself in a funky outfit with glitter all over her face. Once their outfits are complete, Nando brings out a chart with five asks of the day. They decide to start with the first one, which is a challenge. The kids take their parents to a cafe where they order a dish known as the Gut Buster. This is a large bowl filled with ice cream, brownies, and everything sweet. But the challenge is they have to finish the bowl within 30 minutes or they'll have to pay the full $40 for it. As the timer begins counting down the minutes, Everyone starts eating. With only two minutes left on the timer, everyone begins to give up, but Carlos pushes forward and manages to finish the last bits of ice cream. However, he soon begins to feel sick, but the waiter tells him that he needs to hold the ice cream down or they will lose the challenge. With much difficulty, Carlos keeps the ice cream down and 
they end up winning the challenge. Next up on the agenda is a car wash. The kids don't make things easy for them and tell their parents that they need to keep the windows down during the car wash. Even though Allison is hesitant to get her car wet, she wants to win the bet against Katie, which is why she rolls down the windows. With the second ask completed successfully, the children make Carlos drive them to a secret location. Before they arrive at their destination, Nando makes all of them change into personalized tracksuits. The children take their unsuspecting parents into a water park, where they tell them that they are going to play a game called Kaploi, a game that is a mixture of paintball and capture the flag. Nando informs his parents that he has gathered several people at the park by telling them that they are trying to find contestants for a reality TV show. He had done this so that each of them could have their own team. The game begins, and for the first time in years, Allison feels like she's getting to relive her younger days. Everyone quickly finds their team, and the game begins. Carlos begins to get too arrogant and tells his team to stay put because his kids will go for their mother first. However, Katie decides to attack her father's team first and manages to get several of them out of the game right away. Allison, on the other hand, is smart and makes moves that result in her winning two of the team's flags. When Katie and Nando notice that their mother is winning the game, they team up. Nando throws a smoke bomb in the middle of the ground, but it does not work out the way he had hoped. Allison uses this to her advantage and wins the game. While everyone celebrates Allison's win, Carlos sneaks off to make a phone call. He starts resolving a work emergency, but Ellie comes up behind him. When she is about to berate her father, she notices a small bird that has fallen out of its nest. Ellie tells her father that she will keep his secret if he helps the bird back into its nest. Carlos immediately agrees and climbs up on the tree. As soon as he places the bird back, the mother attacks him, causing him to slip and fall off the tree, injuring his back. With Carlos injured, the family heads to the hospital, where the doctor tells them that Carlos has gotten away with minor injuries. Away from the children, Carlos tells Allison that he is not feeling well enough to continue with Yes Day. Allison agrees and tells their children that the day is ending and Carlos mentions that he needs to stop at the office before they can head home. Allison gets upset with him and replies that he should be the bad guy this time and tell their children that Yes Day is over. Still upset, Allison goes out of the hospital where she sees Jean, the paramedic who had driven them to the hospital. Jean asks Allison what is wrong, and she confesses that she had a fight with her husband. Jean then tries to make her feel better and says that she shouldn't try to change someone who does not want to change. This gives Allison the idea that she can continue with Yes Day without Carlos. As Carlos joins his wife outside, she tells him that he can go home if he wants, but she will continue to celebrate the day with their children. Just then, their children join them outside as well, and Allison tells them that they will be going to the Magic Mountain, an amusement park. Nando is extremely happy to hear this, even though it breaks Allison's rule of not going to any place that is not within the 20-mile radius. Seeing how happy their kids are, Carlos decides to join them too. Once they reach there, Allison agrees to join Katie on the roller coaster, while Carlos takes Nando and Ellie on other kid-friendly rides. After their rides, the kids get snacks, and Allison waits for them to get free. Katie gets up to join Carlos at the cotton candy stand and forgets to take her phone with her. Allison picks it up, intending to hand it back to Katie, but she notices a text from her friend saying that two boys will be joining them at the concert. This does not sit well with her, and she immediately confronts Katie about it. She tells her daughter that she will not be going to the concert with her friend and grounds her. Katie gets upset and walks away with Nando and Ellie after telling Allison that she hates her. Carlos tries to intervene and reminds his wife that their daughter is grown up. No matter how much they want to protect her, they can't. As Allison continues to complain, she notices a pink stuffed gorilla. She tells Carlos that she wants to win it for Katie because it looks similar to the one she had when she was younger. Determined to win the game, Allison goes up against another woman, but when she wins, the woman refuses to let her take the stuffed toy. This results in a fight between the two of them, and the manager of the park ends up calling the police on them. Carlos and Allison get arrested and are placed in a holding cell while their children wait outside with a police officer. However, as the time for the concert draws closer, Katie lies to the officer and tells him that their grandparents have come to pick them up. The three kids then head out where they find Katie's friends, Layla and Julie, waiting for them in the parking lot. Julie drives everyone home, and as Katie gets ready for the concert, Nando and Ellie throw a huge party at home. 
Back at the police station, Allison and Carlos come out of the holding cell, only to find that their kids have left on their own. The two of them immediately decide to split up so that they can get to their children in time. Carlos decides to head home to find Nando and Ellie, and Allison goes to find Katie at the concert. At the same time, things start to quickly get out of hand as children begin to wreak havoc inside the house, and none of them want to listen to Nando when he tells them to stop. Things take a turn for the worse when Nando notices Ellie holding a beaker filled with vinegar over buckets of baking soda. He tells his sister to wait until he has connected the pipes to the buckets outside, but she accidentally drops the jar into the bucket of baking soda, causing an explosion, and bubbles begin to fill up Nando's room. Amused by this, other children begin to follow and carry out the same experiment inside the house, filling it up with foam and bubbles. At the concert, Katie refuses to follow Layla into a tent with the boys and finds herself left alone in the middle of the concert. Scared, Katie tries to call Nando, but her phone dies. Just then, Allison arrives at the concert and starts looking around for her daughter. She soon finds herself backstage, where she meets the main singer for the night, her, Gabriella Wilson. Desperate to find Katie, Allison asks her to let her take some time from her performance and call out for Katie. Gabriella agrees, and as Allison gets on the stage, she begins singing, catching a lost Katie's attention. She starts waving her hands and catches the attention of her mother, who rushes towards her. During this, Carlos reaches home and shouts that the party is over. Just as the kids are leaving, he tells them that they have to stay and help clean the house. Nando and Ellie are surprised to see their father taking a stand and quickly obey him. In no time, the kids get rid of the foam and get the house spotless. Once all of the other kids leave, Allison and Katie arrive home and Carlos once again tells his children that they are grounded for lying to them. The three of them apologize and the two older kids leave to clean the rest of the house. Ellie, on the other hand, tells her parents that yes day is not over yet and she has one last request that she needs them to fulfill. The two of them agree and sometime later, the whole family sets up a camp in their backyard where they play board games and spend time together as a family. Shortly after, they hear an explosion and find that Nando had set up more baking soda-filled buckets in the house that had exploded, filling their backyard with foam again. Thanks for tuning in. A thumbs up would be amazing because I've got some bills to pay. Back in my bag and I gotta brag, I do this shit for real. When we was down and we had nothing, we had to share a meal. We put the shit in overdrive with no steering wheel.